dear friends there is no one who says i don't want peace uh, everyone seeks peace wants peace craves for peace even when we want many other things after a while we see that all that disturbance all that wanting all that seeking and running after i don't want that i want peace peace is wanted and a question comes that what do we want peace for why are we searching for peace is there a reason for it is there a why for it uh, the idea is that look many things we want as a means for something like i want money uh, money is a means so that i will be able to do this and do that and uh, i will have a nice big house to live in uh, i will be able to then i live peacefully so i want money for living peacefully or happily money is wanted not for money itself but to fulfill some other end so money is uh, a means many other things that we want are of that type that uh, through that we want something else and therefore this question can be asked easily that why do you want this uh, why do you want money why do you want to have uh, a, a political power uh, why do you want to have a lot of education uh, these questions when asked uh, they bring out certain answers oh if i get this then i will get this through it so they are means to an end but when this question is put forth uh, in the context of peace that why do you want peace we do not really find an answer uh, as human beings we think in terms of cause and effect that from this uh, this follows Uh, so if peace is the cause uh, what effect will it bring do we think about it that what will be the effect of peace uh, of what peace can become cause uh, and we find that uh, there is nothing that we can think of uh, peace is wanted for peace not to get something from peace it is a primary thing that we want and not uh, to produce something else out of it but it is a primary thing that we feel that we need we want i want to have peace and so uh, we uh, our seeking peace is uh, a primary thing and it is sought by everyone and seeking peace uh, so many times or rather or almost always uh, ends into uh, a paradoxical situation that that seeking itself is kind of killing the peace uh, i remember a nice story that uh, a man uh, showed his lawyer friend hey look this is a 100 dollar bill is it genuine or fake the lawyer looked at it carefully and then after looking uh, while putting it in his own pocket uh, said that it is a genuine note of 100 dollars give me another 50 dollars my fee for uh, g- giving this counseling is 150 dollars so you owe me another 50 dollars so now what happened to that person's question uh, it was better he would have not asked it whether this uh, because he lost it in the process 
So it was not worth asking that question to a lawyer uh, because then he lost it. So it is a peace when we go to get peace. Uh, at times, or uh, always, uh, we we'll tend to lose it. Uh, they, uh, for example, the household family quarrel, uh, that it, it erupts for I want peace and I want peace. Uh, so let us fight it out, uh, who gets <laughs> peace from whom. So I want peace, this idea, uh, is very difficult to um, uh, actually materialize. Then we turn towards a global peace. There are so many global peace initiatives that go on uh, that uh, the world is full of them, right from United Nations, uh, right from every state. And no state ever says, that we do not want peace. What is the case with the individual is also the case with the state. No state says that uh, we want uh, wars, uh, we do not want peace. Every state says that it is for peace that we are doing this. We want peace. And so even the terrorists, they say that this is what we are doing to get ultimately the peace. Uh, and then if we look at the history, we can see that uh, uh, there never was really a time uh, when there was uh, no, there were no wars, uh, there was nothing, uh, no time that uh, they, uh, we can think that everything on the earth was peaceful. Uh, maybe only when there was no life at all, it was all peaceful. But uh, otherwise, always struggles, always conflicts, always uh, taking uh, the cudgels uh, against each other. Uh, in these uh, movements for peace also, uh, some such thing happens that peace but my way, my peace. My model of peace does not agree with your model of peace. And so let us fight it out. So the uh, idea about having this uh, peace is uh, very funny, that let us have world peace. Uh, and we also see the great world teachers. And the question crops up that, uh, well, uh, they are great teachers of peace, no doubt, uh, because we get in their teachings that they are teaching peace. But at the same time, we see also uh, that uh, they are denouncing uh, some kind of peace too. Uh, we see that in teachings uh, of, say, Lord Krishna, uh, many get this question about study of Bhagavad Gita, that uh, how uh, this can be a proper scripture for mankind, where the Lord himself tells Arjuna, who wanted to be peaceful, um, that Arjuna is being taught by none other than the incarnation of God, that, hey, uh, you should not refrain from fighting this war, you should go ahead and uh, fight this war, uh, kill your enemies, and so forth. You uh, get this, this message in Bhagavad Gita. Yes, there are, of course, uh, the advice at various places in Bhagavad Gita, very prominently present, that yes, practice peace. Uh, you have to have uh, no, the control of mind and also innumerable sentences you will find. But still this question uh, crops up in the minds of many. In fact, uh, one finds it quite contradictory. Uh, one uh, great scholar of uh, his a British scholar, uh, he finds it very perplexing that how Mahatma Gandhi, uh, who uh, is, of course, a champion for non-violence and peace, uh, 
uh, how he uh, is such a big fan of Bhagavad Gita, uh, that uh, which teaches uh, war. So it, he naturally he finds that contradictory, that a person who wants to have peace everywhere and is very particular about uh, uh, following the right means too. Uh, there is always uh, that means uh, in Mahatma Gandhi's uh, teachings that the means also should be uh, peaceful. Sadhana Shuchita, the Sanskrit word that he has used a few times, that the means should also be pure, proper means. Uh, means should not be chosen uh, just with the idea that that ultimate end is important, means justify the end or end justifies the means. Uh, we, it is a, a conflict comes between them, but uh, Mahatma Gandhi always uh, uh, made this point that the means also uh, must be sanguine, pure and all that. Now, uh, such a person why such a person is so devoted to Bhagavad Gita, where uh, the message of war uh, is uh, to given to Arjuna, fight war. Uh, and uh, with a cool mind he is told to fight, Yudhyasva Vigata Jvaraha. Uh, this, this also gets interpreted by some uh, that uh, do not have a remorse also about fighting. Uh, do your job uh, without having this idea that you are uh, killing people that work that you shouldn't be doing. No, uh, do it and be, uh, do not feel any s sense of guilt in doing so because you are uh, doing your, uh, whatever your duty is you that you are following. And uh, one gentleman asked me that, look, uh, that your God uh, preaches this. And since he was Christian, uh, I said, look uh, what Jesus says, uh, what Jesus says. If we uh, only interpret superficially uh, in Matthew 10, 34, you find these words. Uh, Jesus says there, and you will find it n not only in Matthew and Luke, also similar passage. That I came to bring peace on earth. Very clear statement. Mm, do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to set a man, is very explicit. Jesus is very explicit here. For I came to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and so forth. It is, now, how do you reconcile this with Jesus' teachings, that love thy enemy? Mm, if somebody hits you on one cheek, turn the other cheek also. Uh, so, therefore, we have to look for uh, the, the right advice, the proper advice about peace in our life. That where is this peace to be found? Uh, we look for peace. Uh, it is, uh, Jesus says, uh, right when, uh, that day when he was going to be captured, he tells his followers to keep aside the sword. F put away your sword for those who live by sword, die by sword. So, uh, although he brings a sword, he also tells this. In uh, Old Testament also you find uh, the, uh, these ideas of violence. Uh, that yes, I will, uh, God says that I will wreak havoc. Uh, and uh, all those uh, who are the enemies uh, of God will be killed. So, uh, this uh, you see even in the scriptures. Uh, every time we think of peace, 
uh, we uh, say that let us have a war so that through that war we will be able to restore peace. Uh, it is uh, uh, very often and done to, to support the war efforts that yes, we want peace, but unless uh, these uh, evil people are eliminated, we won't be able to uh, get peace. So first let us start war and the peace then is uh, a, a victim uh, in that and it continues uh, last uh, Friday I heard a very nice lecture uh, at UMass Dartmouth about this uh, uh, Mr. Devji from Oxford was giving this lecture about Gandhiji and peace and he was telling that how uh, history sometimes uh, becomes uh, a vehicle in this that uh, and that is why uh, Gandhiji didn't want the study of history and uh, not that uh, uh, Mr. Devji supported that idea but uh, he said look at the argument about it that in history you see that uh, this community or these people piled injustice on us now therefore now we have to wreak revenge on them then that again becomes history, the other party keeps on waiting that yes, uh, now uh, let us uh, uh, take revenge on them. And it, it continues uh, like this, that uh, I want peace, but first I want to teach these evil people a lesson and then uh, I will have peace. It is uh, like those... Uh, two little kids uh, who wanted to do something, uh, some mischief while the uncle was asleep. Uh, so uh, they started their business uh, saying that keep quiet, keep quiet. Each was telling the other uh, and keep, uh, keep quiet, did I not tell you, keep quiet, you are talking, you are, and then they became so loud in denouncing each other, uh, laying blame on each other that the uncle woke up and all their plans, uh, they were daft. So our idea of uh, let us bring peace, uh, so let us eliminate all those are evil people and then there will be peace. In the process, we ourselves become much worse evil uh, people in, uh, because we are eliminating, eliminating them. We are not seeing that the same evil is in us as well. So, uh, there is a beautiful saying by uh, Kabir that uh, uh, if you uh, look into yourself, you will not find uh, anybody who is a bigger evil doer in the world. So, it is uh, our ego uh, is the impediment in this, in getting this peace. Uh, peace is what we want, uh, excellent. But let us then an analyze why we want peace and why do we not get it and where can be, can it be found. And we will see that our life is like war against peace, war with peace. Our very living uh, in this world uh, is constantly fighting uh, the peace that is within. Uh, generally, we do not uh, realize this fact. We feel that it is outside somewhere that is uh, creating mischief. And if that person or that group is eliminated, there will be peace everywhere. It is uh, really very difficult to uh, sympathize with this idea uh, for any sane person. Uh, the real cause is uh, that we have uh, our desires. And these so many desires, they create uh, a, a disturbance, 
uh, in our minds. Every desire you can see uh, causes uh, a disturbance. Uh, see, if you don't have any desire, uh, of course that is a statement that is just uh, uh, to be imagined because it is hypothetical uh, to have uh, no desire in a person as such. Uh, it is told that many people go to uh, that very famous pilgrimage place in India. Uh, it is in the uh, eastern part uh, where there is a temple of Lord of the Universe, Jagannath Puri, which means the city uh, of Lord of the Universe. Very nice uh, temple and uh, literally millions of people, they go there. Now it is told that uh, uh, whatever desire you have in your mind, if you go there, it will get fulfilled. Mm, so people go there, whatever desire is in their mind uh, may get fulfilled, may not, who knows, but uh, uh, it is said that if you go there with no desire at all, you will get liberated. It is, and uh, some desire or the other arises. Uh, I went there and decided, let me see, no desire should come in my mind. But uh, then I saw some desire creeping up, so it cropped up in the mind. Uh, I don't know whether it got fulfilled or not, but uh, uh, the no desire at all is certainly a, an ideal state, but uh, uh, not easily possible to see uh, in us or in people around us. Uh, but just imagine that when you have no desire, and then you are peaceful, calm. A desire makes you start uh, having that restless feeling and that, yes, uh, let me go to see a movie. Otherwise, you were sitting peacefully. A little desire woke up there in the mind. Oh, okay, yes, so uh, let me find out uh, which theatre has the best one today. And then uh, you put on your clothes and then uh, go out. Uh, it is all that uh, restlessness begins and then afterwards uh, if you don't like the movie, hey, what a frustrating experience and all that. It is uh, once there was uh, uh, some people with camera and all shooting a movie uh, on the street, some person asked, what are you guys doing? And we are shooting a movie. If the movie is like what I saw the other day, it deserves to be shot. <laughs> it is that uh, it is that you go with desires and disturb the existing peace. So uh, that tells us that uh, whenever we have that disturbance, uh, they, it begun, begins the losing of peace. And so, uh, if I have, if I want peace, what is at war with peace? I want peace for sure. Uh, nobody has uh, uh, any uh, disagreement about it. Everybody wants peace. And yet, uh, if we look uh, at what is at war with peace, why do we not get it? Uh, why do we not get it in spite of hundreds of organizations uh, who are working for peace? And yet uh, we find our lives uh, full of restlessness, uh, full of anger. Why? Uh, because of the desires which keep on wailing in us. Uh, it doesn't sound uh, sometimes uh, very easy to understand that uh, how desires can be can uh, be so uh, uh, antagonistic to peace. Why desires uh, are at war with peace? 
I can have good desires, we separate that, okay, bad desires uh, can be against peace, but good desires, let me do good to the people, let me serve people, let me work to assure peace in this world. Uh, these desires are good, so how can these desires uh, are, you can call them at war with peace? Yes, these desires also are at war with peace, maybe at a lesser extent. Uh, but all the same, any desire that comes in the mind, it disturbs the existing peace. We seek peace. Uh, Vedanta says, why we seek peace, you know? Because our very intrinsic nature is peace. It is not that uh, we are seeking peace uh, from somewhere else. Uh, we are peace itself. Our very nature is divine and all-pervading. Uh, there is therefore no question of uh, desire or violence there. Uh, both actually go together. Desire, uh, whatever the desire be, uh, it is of this form that I uh, do not have this and so let me get this. And it, it creates the disturbance even in ushering in the peace in the world. Uh, organization A working for peace organization B working for peace. Now, uh, they are at war who gets more funding. Uh, it is uh, whether our organization working for peace gets more funding or your organization gets. It may not come to swords, but uh, it may, uh, in the mind, it may create that I and they. It is mine and theirs. It is uh, a war. Uh, may not come to the level of guns or swords, but still it is uh, not peace. It is therefore a very complex question as to uh, what can usher in a really peace in life. We sometimes feel that it is anger uh, that uh, is against peace and not uh, uh, the desires. Uh, this is uh, an idea that comes to us that it is not uh, the desires themselves, but then anger uh, is what um, uh, kills the peace. And so we should not get angry and then there will be peace. Now we have to see that desire and anger are really obverse and reverse of the same coin. Uh, not easy, friends, to accept this, but uh, if we uh, look at how the desires work, uh, we can see this. Uh, the desire uh, about anything in the world, uh, that uh, gets obstructed because there are many who have that desire for the same object and it entails competition. And also, uh, even if you get that, uh, it does not die there, it creates more desire. And so, at one point, it is going to meet uh, the uh, resistance. It is repelled. And then that repelling of the desire is what is called anger. Anger and desire are not two separate things, really. Uh, it was uh, uh, a very good lesson uh, for me to learn that uh, how uh, to curb the anger. Uh, if we cannot, if we do not curb the desires, it is not possible to curb anger, really. Externally, we can reduce its expression, but uh, to uh, remove anger uh, while uh, fostering desires is not possible. 
the desires uh, automatically bring anger to uh, like you cannot just take one side of the coin you see uh, when you take coin you may be looking at one side fine but uh, it is uh, the other side is there too so desire is automatically bringing anger too uh, it is uh, therefore not possible to uh, get rid of anger unless we get rid of the desires too and uh, why these desires come up because of this uh, knowledge of limitation uh, rather ignorance well, both again are uh, two ways of presenting the same truth that it is the ignorance of our uh, divine perfect nature Uh, there is then no desire possible it is only in imperfection the desire can come in perfection uh, there is nothing needed that is the meaning of perfection that nothing is needed there uh, and so no desire is possible in perfection uh, so that uh, that uh, ignorance about our perfect nature makes me feel i am uh, so and so i am imperfect uh, i need so many things uh, to make me perfect and let me try to add them uh, one after another so i start running after the world uh, to fulfill my desires and there is always then an obstruction that no you won't get it and then that very desire uh, becomes anger uh, the example given is if you throw a ball uh, and there is wall then that ball rebounds uh, it comes back to you uh, that is uh, like the desire going to the object it hits the wall and then it comes back as anger so uh, therefore uh, the desires are because of this ignorance uh, that i am limited uh, in per in truth i am not limited i am everything and that knowledge uh, therefore uh, will remove desires that knowledge alone will remove desires so uh, one can turn all our desires into this one desire otherwise the desires are such a funny thing uh, that they themselves are at war with peace because desire a also creates its counterpart uh, the an opposite desire if you look at our desires Uh, they have such complexity and they are uh, contradictory with each other uh, i want freedom no who doesn't want freedom uh, even the little children uh, they want freedom everybody wants freedom but then uh, i also want uh, bound in the family in the society in that structure uh, so the two desires they are at loggerheads i want freedom and at the same time i want to blame somebody else for what happens to me uh, they are uh, again at loggerheads our desires therefore being at loggerhead with each other uh, they create the disturbance they are at war with peace uh let us very clearly understand uh, this friends that what is at war with peace uh, that is our desires nobody else is uh, destroying our peace it is uh, my desires which are destroying my peace and therefore when uh, they are calmed and this can be seen also as a gradual process 
they can be calmed down gradually uh, and then gradually the person becomes more and more peaceful when uh, the desires are calmed down uh, to a great extent that person uh, the very demeanor of that person very presence of that person starts scattering peace when that person has no desires uh, everything around that person becomes peaceful uh, it is uh, the force of that desirelessness uh, that makes the peace there so palpable if not our every desire uh, will have a tug of war with some desire in us it is uh, they are very uh, 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 against each other and creating you know a tension in us should i do this or should i do that uh, i want to have rest a uh, oh, lot of work running about i don't want to run about uh, so that is one desire it gets countered by no no i must go and see this place and that place and that place and then uh, become tired and then say oh i want rest so i want rest is a desire and also the other desire that let me see all these nice places in the world uh, which are to be seen uh, my friends go there and then they boast and then i have to be quiet i don't have anything to tell so therefore i must go and see that place now uh, it is obviously counter to the desire and to be uh, resting because uh, to g- get into travel means uh, all those uh, that paraphernalia comes so uh, it kills the peace that is with every desire friends that uh, it is it has its counterpart and so uh, therefore it is a sure way of killing peace so uh, this is uh, that uh, they what is that war with peace if we want peace and there is no other thing that uh, uh, we really can say about it we all want peace so uh, kill uh, the desires that let us not have any desire uh, because everything is already with us and that uh, not having desires is therefore uh, the way also its counterpart i mean uh, this can be presented in another way too uh, and that is how holy mother expressed it that uh, uh, and that is considered to be her last uh, advice uh, holy mother she was uh, uh, lying on uh, almost death bed and uh, at that time she told uh, one of her disciples that look my child if you want peace if you want peace do not find faults of others easier said than done is it not it is uh, we know that uh, as soon as i find faults with others the idea of violence comes it is uh, uh, that person is responsible for all this that is happening to me so uh, if we stop finding faults with others a statement of a, a holy mother cannot be wrong friends mm, we can verify that in our own life uh, this is a practical statement the less we tend to blame others mm, the more peaceful we become uh, try and find out you know it is it, you will find it so helpful everybody uh, who has tried uh, finds that it is so helpful that if we want to have peace stop finding uh, faults with others stop blaming others uh putting blame on somebody else is uh, uh, a natural tendency uh, that yes that because of that fellow i am suffering 
uh, and otherwise it was all so nice. But that person uh, is uh, just uh, uh, insincere, liar. You can heap all then uh, those vices on that person. Because of that, all this problem comes to me. Uh, I know uh, one lady uh, who used to be come here. Uh, these days she doesn't stay in Providence, uh, but uh, used to have this problem all the time, uh, complaints against her bosses. Now, uh, it never ends, you know, that, uh, and that imagination uh, fuels them further that I saw that uh, he was talking to uh, the uh, um, um, other colleague of mine. I am sure he was plotting against me. So it, how, what makes you think like that? Uh, it might not be so, uh, but uh, then all peace gets destroyed. They harass me so much at work. Uh, these people are really swami. And she would say so that you are in a different world altogether. You do not understand these things. Uh, well, maybe I don't understand these things. Uh, but do you understand these things? That yes, uh, somebody is always after you. Uh, what does it indicate that you are so important in the world? And that uh, other people have no other goal in life but just to keep on harassing you. Uh, can, can, do you think it is rational? And how do you... And gradually, you know, that person uh, got this message somehow, uh, slowly, slowly. And then as the message got in, uh, the uh, idea, the very picture changed, uh, became very uh, peaceful, started becoming so peaceful. Uh, no blaming others, no complaining. Okay, such things happen in the world. Oh, okay, uh, nothing. And always uh, very calm. And another thing started, uh, it was obvious that the spirit of cooperation, uh, not having uh, these uh, complaints, is not a negative thing. Uh, with that, what was ushered in was the spirit of uh, cooperation and loving each other that also came up. So, uh, Holy Mother's this advice that don't put blame on others, uh, don't find faults with others. Uh, that is a, a great way of ushering peace in our minds, a very practical method. Uh, it is uh, what is at war with peace, therefore, is uh, these desires and they are congealed. All desires are congealed in what is called ego. Uh, I like that uh, it was a statement uh, made in a very subtle but very telling manner and I cannot forget the impact uh, of that, uh, that one Swami was giving a retreat and somebody from the audience asked this question, I want peace. And the Swami, there was a, a board there and he was writing the question on that. Uh, and so he wrote this question also, I want peace. And then uh, he rubbed out I and rubbed out want and asked, now what is there? Peace. Mm. That remove I, that ego, that uh, I am superior to others, I know everything and I am important, remove I. It is at war with peace. And remove want, wanting. Uh, that wanting has no end. And remove want, remove I, remove want. What was left on the board there? Peace. Uh, this is a very real thing, friends, uh, they, and very practical, verifiable. The lesser is the ego, more is the peace. The lesser are the desires, the more is the peace that we have in life. Uh, whenever I see a very peaceful person, 
uh, I see these qualities in that person, that yes, uh, there is less ego uh, and uh, less uh, troubled by desires and thus the life becomes peaceful. Uh, may we be able to practice these uh, uh, virtues, uh, these great uh, uh, spiritual practices, getting over the ego, getting over the desires, uh, these things which are at war with peace, and thus what will be left in life will be uh, peace. So, thank you friends.